Hi friends, welcome to Total Health Channel. Thank you for being with us from time to time. Please uh, like and share this with others and let's ask God's blessing to be with us in this time together. Heavenly Father, thank you for life in the last days. Thank you for your word. Uh, many men have sacrificed their lives for it. Help us to live well in a similar time uh, coming up. Please uh, give us your spirit and help us to see things as you intend for Christ's sake, exceeding abundantly in his name. Amen. Well, uh, this could, the last video I did was uh, on how a, an encoded earthquake brings judgment to J Jews, Muslims, and Christians in 2023, okay? Well, uh, this is part B. Uh, I didn't really uh, clarify some things. I did mention how judgment comes in a general way, but this will be more specific because um, uh, going back, God declares the end from the beginning, and in the book of beginnings, uh, there was a ram goat, uh, I'm sorry, a ram caught in a bush when Abraham was asked to, to um, uh, sacrifice his son Isaac. But Muslims believe it was Ishmael that was asked to, to his, his, was the son that was sacrificed. And the question is, which is the true holy book? And um, Muslims are militant against Christians and Jews. So uh, what's going to come in the Middle East, I believe, will resolve this problem and clarify it. In fact, um, uh, if he declares, God declares the end from the beginning, we have to move forward in time to Daniel. When Christ was asked about the end of the world, he said to understand the book of Daniel. Eighth chapter has a ram and goat conflict. Well, here's this ram again, okay? And it is uh, in the Middle East. It's at the River Ulai, which is by Kuwait. And it is pushing north into Russia, south into Africa, west to Europe and the New World. And uh, it is clearly a Muslim ram with kings of Media and Persia in verse 20, Daniel 8:20. Well, and it's the vision at the time of the end. So uh, we should see, in fact, I, I, based on that vision, I predicted war with Iraq before 9-11. And uh, I even have a, a book published uh, 20 years ago uh, saying that there would be war with Iraq before uh, I wrote those words before 9-11. Um, uh, so we can depend on, on God's word, trust in it. In fact, I believe living by every word includes uh, reading these prophecies and, and planning, uh, aligning ourselves with what's coming. So um, when uh, the earthquake encoded as a lion's roar, and by the way, that's Amos 3, 7, and 8. Uh, God won't do anything without revealing it. The lion has roared, who will not fear? Well, we apply that to the Daniel prophecy about uh, a ram and a goat with a goat flying from the west. Uh, it means there's going to be war with Iran. Basically, Persia is Iran, Medes and Persians. And um, President Erdogan of Turkey has already appealed for 57 Muslim nations to siege Israel. So it's just a matter of time and when, and I see the timelines lining up for 2023. Uh, when Muslims take the city of Jerusalem, they have a mosque which has an inscription, Allah has no son. And I can just imagine them celebrating uh, that fact as they believe it, when suddenly an earthquake bigger than anything has ever hit this world, uh, it says the Lord will roar from Jerusalem, the heavens and earth will shake. They will be at the epicenter of the biggest earthquake ever, and they will flee, get out of there. But how is this judgment? Okay, judgment in the Bible context is uh, judges were deliverers. Samson was a deliverer. Gideon was a deliverer. God delivered Daniel. That's what his name means. Daniel is my, uh, God is my judge. Uh, El is, is God, and Daniel is God is judge. Uh, and basically, um, he delivers us as he did Daniel, if we're true to him, I believe. Uh, although the three Hebrews said, it doesn't matter if we burn. It's okay. Uh, God, we're not going to bow down. If we're faithful like that, I believe God will deliver us if we have a covenant with him. That's what the covenant was about. In uh, Exodus 34, verse 10, he says, Behold, I make a covenant with you. It's a terrible thing I'm going to do with you. I'm going to drive out the Canaanites. Well, if he would do it for for uh Israel coming out of Egypt, he should do it for us coming out of uh, all countries because that's his promise, really, uh, that he will gather us out of all nations, bring us into our own land, and give us a new heart, put his spirit in us,
cause us to walk in his statutes and judgments. That's Ezekiel 36, verses 24 to 28. And we'll dwell in the land that he gave our fathers. It's not about America or any other country than the promised land, the land of the covenant. And he's going to marry the people who make the covenant with that land. So the earthquake will be a signal that, hey, we're there. Time for the covenant, time for the wedding. Um, the wedding parables have uh, in Luke 12, 36, we're supposed to be ready when he knocks to open immediately. Immediately is, uh, again, the rule of first use. First place you find the word immediately in the Bible is uh, when God, Christ called James and John to be disciples. They immediately left the ship and their father and they followed Christ. And a week, ship is livelihood, our jobs. Oh, I got a job. Well, um, our job really is to honor the Lord. And uh, we want to be with him, follow him, do what he wants. And at that point, we are being called if we understand what I'm saying with the earthquake. The earthquake is a calling just like it was to the Apostle John when he heard the voice of many waters. That voice of many waters is in Isaiah 5, last verse, is the roaring of the sea and the roaring of lions. Okay, and the next verse in, Revel in Isaiah 6, 1 and 2, 3, 4, um, the posts moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. The censer tipped over. Well, that was an earthquake at that time. In fact, it says so in uh, Ze Zechariah 14, verse 5. You'll flee as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Isaiah. That was the king in Isaiah 6, 1. So, uh, big earthquake coming again. And just as Isaiah was called to be a prophet or John was called to be a prophet in that context of an earthquake, roaring of the sea, uh, voice of many waters, we can be called to be prophets if we understand what I'm saying. And we are looking for him at that time. Luke 12, 37 says, Blessed is that servant whom his Lord finds watching. Watching means be awake. Awake at a time when people are ordinarily asleep. Okay, Gregorio is the Greek word. And uh, if we are watching on the eve of Passover, uh, which is when Israelite was, Israel was to be watching, they were to eat the Passover lamb and leave nothing till morning, it says in Exodus 12, verse 10. So we can do that. We, we couldn't do it every night, but the clues only point to one night a year. So why not? You know, and, and so uh, keep this in mind. Uh, that knock is also uh, brings the church of Laodicea to an end because that church anciently in Revelation 3.20, we, we love the idea that Christ is knocking at the door of our hearts. He just wants to be part of all we do. And we think, General Jesus, he's always be there. That's not true, okay? And we have to be ready. The final knock for Laodicea was the earthquake that destroyed the city in 63 AD. And uh, I believe Western Christianity is going to be destroyed by an earthquake for, by preachers who, who don't preach this message or understand it, don't share it with their people, their house will be broken. It says, Christ said, this is Matthew 24, 43, the good man, if he'd have known, would have watched, not suffered his house to be broken. Well, if, if they know it, they should preach it. And if they don't know it, they'll have their house broken. So uh, that's, that's how judgment comes, I believe, to Muslims first, uh, actually, it's Jews first because the Muslims take the, Jeru the, the, <laughs> um, the city of Jerusalem from Jews who have no interest in their spiritual heritage. I, I talked with a Jewish rabbi, Messianic, who, who lamented the fact that the Jews in Israel today uh, are just there for free land because the UN gave it to them. And it was not their land to give. The, the UN didn't own the land. It was God's land. And he covenanted with Abraham to give it to Abraham for his seed. And Paul says, if you're Christ, you're Abraham's seed. That's Galatians 3.29. So it's really our land uh, it, because we are Christ. And, and when Jews see what's going to happen, uh, they should convert to become Christians because the secular Jews will be driven out, but Muslims will also be driven out by God who is protecting the land uh, against uh, Muslim influence. And he's going to give it to Christians who accept Torah or the, the laws of Moses. And those Jews who accept the law of Moses must receive the Messiah as Christians have. That is, those two groups are fully compatible. And in Ezekiel 37, 
when, a, when dry bones come together after a great shaking, the shaking is the earthquake, and they get life. It, uh, God asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? Ezekiel said, Lord, you know, I don't know. But they did. They got breath and life. And two sticks, uh, one for Israel and one for Judah, represent Judah, Jews who accept Messiah, and Israel, Christians who accept Torah or law, laws of Moses. Those come together and make one kingdom in verse 22 of Ezekiel 37. So that hasn't happened yet. And we're really in chapter 36 when God is going to gather us out of all nations and bring us into our own land and give us the Holy Spirit, a new heart, write his laws in us, and we'll keep his statutes, those laws, and live in the land of, that he's given our fathers. We can do that. And that's when America's going down and there's war everywhere, famine and pestilence, uh, they're doing it to us. Um, and I'm not going to explain that right now, but uh, uh, a lot of what's coming has been designed to, to make an end to uh, people and to control populations. And so um, let's try to get it right. And, and uh, uh, that's, in a nutshell, how judgment comes. Now, that's not how the marriage comes. I said uh, this is part B of judgment, but it's also the wedding parables which show that we don't understand them. The first wedding parable, uh, let me back up and say this. These wedding parables all are compatible with the exodus from Egypt as a model. Paul said, I would not have you ignorant how our fathers all passed through the sea. All those things happen for our examples, written for us at the end of the world. That's 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1 and 11. And so uh, if they're written for us, we can uh, uh, look at the, uh, the Egypt model and see how the wedding parables fit that. Uh, Egypt teaches us that there was a sudden event on the Egyptians of a calamity nature. And the wedding parables each show that as well on America. In my opinion, America is like Egypt. Okay, uh, Egypt threw babies in the river and enslaved Israel. We've thrown 63 million babies in the trash and we've enslaved most people in alcohol, tobacco, drugs, uh, even medical care is a form of bondage. So we don't, uh, uh, we need to see the parallel and realize that uh, we're re repeating Israel's history coming out of Egypt and we got to get Egypt out of our hearts, okay, or um, the American way where you can sit and watch TV and want everything you see. Uh, we need uh, a better understanding of the word and, and whatsoever things are true, honest, lovely, good report, think on those things. The TV is almost none of those, okay. Um, it's so much fiction and made up stuff. So, um, and by the way, I'll just tell you, I have never owned a TV in my life, okay? Um, my wife, uh, former wife, got a TV, and, uh, uh, but uh, I did, it wasn't mine. And um, yeah, I, I ha have watched some things and maybe wish I hadn't afterwards, you know. So uh, let's repent, let's seek God and His Word. If we're to live by every word of God, I think we ought to spend our time looking at that more. So that's uh, first wedding parable in Matthew 22 shows a sudden event when the remnant get their city burned for scorning the invitation to the wedding feast. Uh, it also shows the king's servants bid people to the wedding feast. Well, if we're God's servants, we need to be inviting people to a feast. And I, I just want to encourage you to, to uh, understand this well enough to do it. I don't think you do right now. It's it's complex situation because um, this is not a feast in heaven. Like half of Christians want to be snatched to heaven and eat the wedding feast there. Well, this is a feast of betrothal. Jacob was betrothed to Rachel for seven years. And we have a seven year coming that's going to be bad and difficult. But if we're faithful to our covenant with God through those seven years, we can eat the cake in heaven later. And there's... Uh, we will we'll see how this all fits together later as part of the wedding feast. So uh, that's um, the, the remnant get their city burned when uh, and and that's the calamity. In the San Francisco earthquake, more damage was done from fires from disrupted gas lines than from uh, the earthquake. The earthquake is going to do it, in my opinion, to Southern California, San Andreas. Favored author of mine had a vision of an earthquake at Loma Linda. Uh, I attended Loma Linda Medical School. I didn't know that 
the founder did not want drugs taught there. She wanted it for natural remedies to be taught for missionary work. Well, it's just business and making money right now. Huge complex with about seven hospitals in Loma Linda. Like growing like a cancer, in my opinion. Uh, it's a, one of those is a veterans hospital that they didn't put there, the government did. But uh, there's a university hospital, community hospital, um, a rehabilitation hospital, a, um, a pediatric hospital, etc. cetera. Uh, don't need all those things. Uh, if we were doing our mission right, we would be teaching people how to live so they don't get sick. When God took people out of Egypt, he said, if you do these things, you, I'll put none of the diseases of the Egyptians on you. Well, we got all the diseases because we're giving drugs uh, that uh, shouldn't be doing. Anyway, so the uh, founder had a vision of an earthquake at Loma Linda. Buildings great and small were falling to the ground. Many lives were blotted out. It seemed the judgment day had come. Well, the Bible says judgment begins at the house of God. And in a general way, I believe that's America. America professes to be a godly nation. And specifically, I think Seventh-day Adventists think they're God's people, okay? But uh, Ellen White, in her comments on that earthquake, cited Zephaniah 1.8, that God would punish the king's children, okay? So let's not be so eager to be the king's children uh, for the punishment that's coming. Let's seek God and help others to understand. And if I were anybody living in Loma Linda, I would want to move before next spring or by, by May, okay? May Day is going to be uh, uh, trouble, and uh, we'll talk about that later. Uh, but specifically, maybe I should ex explain it now. The wedding parables all have Passover imagery. Uh, the, the midnight cry in Matthew 25 goes back to Egypt. There was a cry at midnight there. Uh, when death fell on the Egyptians, the, the text is Exodus 12, verse 29 and 30, uh, for a cry at midnight. And so uh, when we see that in the wedding parable, hello, rule of first use, calamity again okay then and readiness for that calamity determines our destiny when in Luke 12 36 we're supposed to open immediately we open how the next verse shows a wedding feast it says blessed is a servant whom his Lord finds watching he will gird himself make them sit down to eat and serve them that's what Christ did at the Last Supper it was a wedding feast okay because it's uh, um, James and John had wanted to be on the left and right in the kingdom Christ said can you eat a, a drink of the cup I drink they said, yeah, well, the last night he gives it to them, the cup. This is my blood. And uh, they drank it, but they couldn't hold it. Last, later, when he asked to watch and pray, they went to sleep on him and lost the promises that they could have had, in my opinion, if they had not run from him, but stayed with him at the trial, testified for him that he wasn't going to tear down their temple. He was talking about his body. Come out Sunday morning, you'll see. There would have been witnesses. Jewish leaders could not have lied. And Pentecost could have meant the whole nation in repentance uh, for what they had done to Christ on the cross. And uh, if so, uh, this world would be a much better world today with uh, a Torah, law-observant, biblical laws uh, than it is right now with crazy laws like uh, it's okay to have a new marriage with uh, your other pal, same sex, etc. Uh, sad that, that that is not God's plan at all. And uh, it, it, it doesn't qualify. It's really, the uh, Bible calls it an abomination in Leviticus 18, verse 22. And so when we see an abomination standing where it ought not in Supreme Court, time to flee. Get out of the cities. That's what early Christians did. Uh, when they saw abomination, they understood it to be Rome, and they fled. Well, we've seen Rome come to the uh, Congress. Uh, that's, that's the holy place when it says... Uh, Standing in the holy place in Matthew 25:15, the Pope came to uh, the holy place was where the law was in the in the uh, temple, but the Pope came to where the laws were made. Same idea, and uh, we should see those parallels and parallel our lives uh, to be compatible. So that's just it in a nutshell. The uh, earthquake is encoded as a lion's roar, and we see the lion's roar before the sevens thunders in Revelation 10:3, and before the seven seals. When John hears thunder, it's one of the four beasts saying, come and see. The first beast was a lion, and when the lion roars, it sounds like thunder. So that's how it all fits together, and we need to understand the wedding feast, and I'm just going to explain it briefly here now. Um, 
the wedding feast is Passover because that's the imagery of the wedding parables. I, I mentioned uh, Luke has triple Passover imagery. It says, have your loins girded. Well, Israelites in Exodus 12, 11 had their loins girded at Egypt at Passover when they were ready to leave. And uh, watching was only done at Passover. And then it says he will sit, make us sit down and eat and serve us. That's what he did at Passover. So triple Passover clues. And um, one important modification, a 9-11 modification uh, that I'll explain. The last six parables of Christ, starting with as the days of Noah, when he said, you don't know the day or hour. By the way, he was talking to disciples who didn't need to know. He wasn't talking to us, but they didn't know. But as the days of Noah, he was cluing us for when it would be. Okay, because the days of Noah had Passover, has, was judgment, but it wasn't regular Passover, it was a month later. There were two provisions, 9-11 provisions I call them, because they are from the book of Numbers, chapter 9, verse 10 and 11, 9-11, Numbers 9, verse 10 and 11, for Passover a month later. And the provision was contact with a dead body, like Noah, who buried his uh, grandfather, Methuselah. Methuselah meant, when he dies, it will come. He died as a sign the flood is coming. Noah buried him and uh, was unclean by reason of a dead body, but the flood came the second month with Passover timing. Noah entered on the 10th day, the same day that the Passover sacrifice was selected in Egypt. But when people didn't go in with Noah, they were selecting themselves. They were choosing themselves to be sacrificed. But the animals were smart enough, they went in. <laughs> you know, They followed God's direction. So anyway, and, and the people should have too, but they were just uh, uh, too afraid to be laughed at. Well, uh, I, let's, let's, you can laugh at me if you want, but I believe that that sign may even repeat this coming uh, May. On May Day, watch for animals that might behave uh, peculiarly. A previous confirmation sign is when Muslims take the city. When they take the city and they rejoice in their Allah has no son, the Lord's going to roar from Jerusalem, I believe, and the heavens and earth will shake. That's the earthquake that is the signal for end times. But that earthquake will be at second Passover as the days of Noah. If you think that's just an odd coincidence, the next parable begins, then shall two be in the field. Well, then means the same time, or as a direct consequence, okay? And uh, the good men of feet had known, would have watched, not suffered his house to be broken. Well, that good man in the King James Bible is on a long journey in Proverbs 7, 19 and 20. Long journey is a signal for second Passover. If Israelites took a long trip, couldn't get back in time for Passover, they were to keep it the second month. And uh, the evil servant begins to smite their fellow servants. I believe that's the papacy, okay, with persecution. And that includes Homeland Security and Pentagon. The leaders of those groups are all members of, not, of secret societies. They're trying to make the Pope supreme. They're trying to tear down America like uh, uh, so the UN can be the peacekeepers and, and shoot us if we don't go along with it. People who know the Constitution know that we should have a right to speak and to live and to worship as we please and not go along with uh, the Pope's plans, etc., for supremacy. But the UN is how he regains his supremacy with so many Catholic nations. So uh, this is heavy stuff to consider, but this is uh, where we're getting to. And uh, search the Bible, see if it's true. So uh, second Passover, uh, when the evil servant begins to smite, then shall it be like ten virgins. Then means same time as ten virgins, and the ten virgins have the long journey. Uh, it ends. Watch, you don't understand. It's like a far journey. A man traveling to a far country gives some talents, five, some three, some one. Well, Christ is the man that took the long journey to heaven. He will return according to his law. He said, till heaven and earth pass, not one jot or tittle will pass from the law till all is fulfilled. So he'll, he'll be coming back on the long journey for second Passover to execute judgment. It will be, uh, he will come, he says in Revelation 3.3, 3, if you do not watch, I will come on you as a thief. Well, watching again, only night in the year is second Passover, or it will be second Passover, uh, in my opinion. Jews keep first Passover, judgment will fall on them from the Muslims, but for Christians, the earthquake will come at second Passover. We should understand Christ's words, and the Jews looking back on that should say, hey, he was the guy that went to heaven, and he came back as second Passover. He's sparing the land for us if we accept him, as for Christians who accept Torah, the, the, the laws. 
So that's just it in a, in a big nutshell, how judgment comes when uh, I believe this coming spring for multiple reasons. Get my book and uh, um, I have a, hold on, yeah. Best single book I can give you is uh, Mega Quake 2023. It's available on Amazon. Uh, if you search my name, Ruling, R-U-H-L-I-N-G, and books, you can see it. Or go to my website, which is um, Health, Happiness, Destiny, those three words, healthhappinessdestiny.com, and you can uh, get a soft cover if you like, or uh, digital. And uh, if you can't afford uh, even the digital, I'll send it to you. My email's there. Oh, and another place, you more information on thebridegroomcomes.wordpress.com. Thebridegroomcomes.wordpress.com. Thank you. Like this. Share it with others. We'll see you again another time. God bless.